Bonjour à tous. Merci. Good evening, everybody. Thank you to the many of you already present at this spontaneously organized session. It responds to the desire of many French museum professionals to help their Ukrainian counterparts. This evening, we will listen to our colleagues from UK and for those who have managed to connect, we will be displaying their names on the screen. Thank you. We invited our colleague Taras Vozniak, General Director of the National Gallery of Art in Elviv. He was unable to join us, but left us a dismayed message. You can't really help us. In wartime, everything is war. The only thing you can do is to influence your governments to close the airspace of Ukraine. Sorry for this sincerity, he says. I'm giving you his message because we understand his distress. At the same time, we have a deep concern about the integrity of the rich cultural heritage of Ukraine. The joint statement this morning of the European Ministers of Culture remembers and recalls the dangers and damage it faces. The ministers have affirmed their support for supporting cultural institutions to host cultural professionals. Tonight, we too will be concrete. That's why we have organized this session actively, as you know. We want to concretely see what we can do together here in France to help protect collections and their professionals and to speak concretely about Ukrainian museums and monuments to make them better known to the public so that it can be considered as damaging as possible to destroy them. We will share with our Ukrainian colleagues here tonight what we are already doing. Here, those of us presented here today, the NGOs like ICOM and ICOMOS linked to UNESCO, directors of major research and training organizations. I think that we can also show their names on the screen now as well. The representative professional associations of museums. We have BBF, FFCR, Major museums are already very involved, such as the Pompidou Center Museum, whose director is already here, and the French Ministry of Culture as well. We will be hearing from Charles Personnaz, who will be talking about the action of ALIF, the International Alliance for the Protection of Heritage in Conflict Zones. My counterpart from ICOM Poland, Piotr Ripson, should be here from Poland. I cannot see him yet, but I hope that he is here. As you know, Poland has already welcomed around 1 million refugees and he's helping the museum staff already on the ground. We will hear from him if he wishes. Many of you have responded to our invitation. You can see the list of people who should be speaking. So please do be brief as it is important that all the actors can express themselves. We have about an hour together. Thank you to Harriet Bond, our interpreter. We informed her last minute, so she will only be here for one hour. The speeches this evening are not hierarchical. They're ordered according to the possibilities of some people with their availability and the interpretation so that our Ukrainian friends can speak in English. Before handing over to them, I would like to ask Sophie Delapierre, who represents ICOM International, to share a message, and then we will hand over directly to Angelina Zabritska, who works at the National Audrey Sheptivsky Museum of Lviv, who is with us this evening. Sophie Delapierre. Could you please give your speech on behalf of ICOM International? Yes, of course, uh, dear Juliette, President of ICOM France, thank you very much, firstly, for this initiative, and secondly, for inviting us around to this table. I will not be long, as I am also looking forward to hearing from the panelists and to hear what's happening 
you asked me to mention certain points, particularly what ICOM International is doing. I'm starting to see certain people arrive and I know that I'm already linked to a number of you and I'm sorry if I'm repeating myself, but what is important in ICOM International and at the Heritage Institute is that yes, there is the declaration of the 24, but there was work before that in December and January. There, has, there was already some actions as we could see, we feared, we couldn't believe this approach, but we were able to react on the 24th as there has been anticipated work before this date. To come back to the declaration, it is important for us to firmly condemn this action with very clear and measured and weighted words, along with what a number of UN agencies have done. This is so that heritage professionals and ICOM can be within this declaration. That's what we have attempted to do. So this is a firm condemnation, but also there are heavy risks on heritage, but we also want to mention the risks on staff at museums above cultural. We talk about the unestimable loss in, in cultural terms, but human loss is also obviously irreplaceable. And this is a very important point. So the Convention of Human Rights and uh, ICOM France will be doing everything possible. And I know ICOM International is as well. It's not easy to say, but in times like this, we need to encourage ourselves to do everything we can internationally to protect the collections after the staff have been protected. And we have seen this in the press. People have spoken about this. People have said that their staff are incredible and they've done everything that they can, hours and hours staying at museums even overnight. And I think that this is something that needs to be emphasized and it is proof of real courage. I wanted to remind you also of the existing tools. There is a lack of risk management and a, an emergency plan. So we have tried to make available tools and we know that ICOM is able to work on international coordination across its network. There's been a real rallying of the museums around this common shared position. Another interesting point is that these positions including the, the national committees have asked for this. We responded immediately to the national committees of ICOM, informing them to take position so that there is a rallying behind the declaration. And I, from what I've heard, this was widely appreciated by the national committees. In addition to these public statements of position, there has also been incredible mobilization of the international community mobilization of exhibitions, monitoring, aid that's been proposed. And some people here today, I can recognize your names and I know that you have offered your help. And I do find that really extraordinary. But this is not just a condemnation by I. ICOM. ICOM has a certain strength, but we are not alone. And I would like to underline the EMO organization that requested our support and our network to facilitate the communication of their call in order to bring together all information about the initiatives in the museum sector. We have supported their call. We've just asked Nemo to give an option in their formal questionnaire so that people can take part in private initiatives as well. Some initiatives at wartime needs discretion. So we just asked Nemo that some people may be allowed 
to take part in their initiative privately. So there is the, not the option to have it public or private at the moment. We believe that that is important. Alongside this museum mobilization, there is the international mobilization. And then I would just like to remind us of the role of ICOM International and its institutional support. We've been contacted by UNESCO multiple times. You've mentioned Alif, which I believe is, is represented here today. In fact, I've seen the press release of Alif that has enabled, released a fund for Ukraine. And this is another way of launching an, an initiative and, and coming alongside initiatives. There's the extraordinary meeting of Blue Sheet with ICOM, CIFLA. A number of decisions have been proposed and taken for Blue Shield, I know that there is Blue Shield France speaking later on. I'm not going to speak on their behalf, but there is significant mobilization today and a meeting like today is important. Mobilization is impressive, but there are two points that we need to underline that are very important. One, we need coordination within this mobilization. At the moment, we can feel that there's a desire to help, but this is very disparate. So we need coordination and above all, and we don't say this as much, but we need long term mobilization and we don't say this enough as this is something that is unfortunately likely to last a long time. At the moment, there's a lot of media interest. It's quite recent. A lot of people are willing to help, which is great. But as an organization, we need to coordinate a long term mobilization for as long as our Ukrainian colleagues need. I'm going to end on this point as I'm also looking forward to listening to my colleagues. I'd like to end on an important point which was mentioned a few minutes ago. You mentioned a message from a colleague that may have appeared quite stern, but I understand it. We need to listen to our colleagues. Yes, we want to help, that's great. We have a lot of things to suggest, that's great. We need to coordinate that but we need to listen to what they need. And it's by listening to them that we are going to be able to give them what we what they need. We need visibility on what is happening. We need lobbying and we need to be promoting heritage. If that's what you need, that is what we will provide. If in the future you want something else, whether it's collections or professionals, we will adapt to their requests and try to meet their needs. I'd like to finish on this point. Thank you very much once again for the initiative of bringing us together this evening. And ICOM International is fully on hand to help you. And we are working a lot in this region at the moment. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sophie. Thank you very much for this precise and clear speech. Please do um, stay with us throughout the evening. So in ICOM France has supported ICOM International's initiatives. This evening, we have invited other organizations and NGOs. We are delighted that Alif is here today. And, and I saw uh, Louis, who is represented here today, and together we rallied the European national committees of ICOM together. And that is why we are able to meet together today. And we have been able to get around 160 participants this evening. Thank you, Sophie, for reminding us of the importance of listening to our Ukrainian colleagues. I would like to say hello to Katarina Shuyeva, president of ICOM Ukraine, who has now joined our call and who will be speaking to us immediately. In the organization of our discussion this evening, we are not going to have hierarchical 
organized speeches. Some people are able to be here earlier and some people are going to be later. So I'm just taking into account individual constraints. If you agree, I would like to hand over to Eric de Chassis, the director of the National Institute of Art History in France, as I know that he will need to leave us before 6 p.m. Eric de Chassé, would you like to speak now? And right after that, I'm going to be handing over to Anastasia from Ukraine. I would have preferred for my um, Ukrainian colleagues to speak first. I will be able to wait until they have finished speaking. So I would like to hand over to Angelina Zabitivska. So Angelina is cultural secretary of the museum Andrei Sheptipsky in Lviv. Thank you very much for being here. You can speak in English and the interpreter will be translating into French. Over to you, Angelina. Okay, okay. good evening. Do you hear me? Good evening. Do you hear me? On vous entend parfaitement. Merci beaucoup. Est-ce que les interprètes entendent? Yes, we can hear you perfectly. Thank you. Allez-y, uh, allez-y. Uh, Please start. Prenez votre micro. Angelina, we can hear you. Please start. Your microphone is switched off at the moment. Can you hear me? Okay. Can you hear me, please? Not yet. Not yet. L'interprète n'entend pas. Can you hear me? Vous pouvez y aller. Okay, no. You can go. Vous pouvez parler. So we are grateful for the initiative of the French National Committee of the International Council of Museums to hold this Zoom session in solidarity with Ukraine and expression of support and real desire to help to the Ukra Ukrainian museums in that situations that we are now find ourselves. I represent Andrei Sheptitsky National Museum in Lviv, that is one of the largest art museums in Ukraine. Its immense collections are dedicated to the Ukrainian culture in its historic evolution, with the most important segment highlighting old Ukrainian art, especially Christian art. So Andrei Sheptitsky National Museum in Lviv has seven locations where exhibitions and repositories are situated. From the very first day of the war, we were certainly we were not prepared to this event. And uh, the first day of the war, all the collections were on display. And uh, from that day, we started to uh, dismantle all the exhibitions. And now almost this job is finished. We have packed all the items and store them in the repositories and other secure places. As a matter of fact, the repositories now are overloaded with objects. We have received some help with packing and conservation materials from volunteers from the National Museum in Stockholm. Many Polish museums as well have suggested us their help. And among the basic challenges that our museum faces now, first of all is uh, that um, we have to secure climate control conditions with the help of additional equipment. That equipment that museum has in its possession now is limited. We need defensors, we need, we need humidiators, we meet, need their humidiators. So as far as existing museum devices cannot meet the needs of storage of all the pieces, some of which have been moved to basements from their permanent places of safekeeping. And challenge number two is more in political space. The 13th day of the war, ranges cruel in our country. Ukraine battles the barbaric enemy whose aggression is aimed at destroying our freedom, our identity and our culture. And, and no necessity in devices when cities remain at constant risk of being bombarded or targeted with rockets. 
that leave buildings and infrastructure totally destroyed and people's lives being enveloped in flames and being in danger. The enemy doesn't care about civilians and deliberately launches its attacks at residential areas, schools, nurseries, hospitals, museums. And uh, so the most important task now is not only in museum, uh, is that we ask about no-fly zone in Ukraine and to stop Russia from inflicting down from the air. That is why the very important message in my address is to that museum or the community all over the world and the International Council of Museums should how somehow support Ukraine in its appeal to close the sky. Thank you. Thank you very much, dear colleague, for your call for help in the protection of collections. You started by talking about dehumidifiers and then continued with your political message. Um, Katarina Shuyeva, would you like to say anything at this stage in the discussion? Alternatively, I can pass over to somebody else. Katarina, are you here with us? Uh, dear colleagues, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for invitation and for this event and for this meeting. Uh, yes, I'm, I'm sorry for my dark, uh, dark background because uh, we do not have possibility to use uh, bright light for the moment. It's evening, so we need to, to, to sit in dark uh, uh, because of uh, risk of uh, bombing and shelling. Uh, so, uh, first of all, I would like to, to thank you very much uh, to all international community for your support. It's unprecedented uh, situation for us, and we uh, we try now to manage the situation. Uh, to be honest, we were not uh, completely ready for it, of course, because nobody can be ready for war. And uh, every day and every hours, we have to uh, uh, we have more and more information about destruction of uh, heritage objects. I mean, architectural objects in many cities uh, because of shelling of uh, city centers, etc., And today, one more museum was destroyed uh, at the uh, Western, uh, at the Eastern region in Ohtirka uh, city. Uh, and uh, we try now to manage different processes, including evacuation of collection, including protection of collection uh, at the place. Uh, for example, as it Lviv, in Lviv, now uh, about which Angelina just uh, told you. And uh, we also try to manage the, uh, all the support from international partners because uh, there are some difficulties with our customs and other processes. And now our government tried to find the decision and try to establish some funds, uh, for example, uh, funds uh, coordinated with Ministry of Culture, uh, which uh, could be possible, which, which make us possible to receive uh, uh, the aid, for example, uh, or also we try to manage uh, through the ICOM community or ICOMS community uh, some small uh, small channels to uh, cooperate uh, the small private initiatives or initiatives between museums uh, in uh, uh, other countries and museums in Ukraine. Uh, so uh, I would like to, uh, to to thank you one more time and uh, to tell that uh, I will provide uh, ICOM community and uh, ICOM France chair, of course, um, the details and uh, possible ways of cooperation and uh, receiving some aids or cooperation between professionals in in concrete uh, concrete sorry <laughs> it's a little bit nervous uh, concrete sphere. Um, so uh, uh, in a few days, I hope we will be more ready to uh, intercooperate uh, with international partners. Uh, I mean, to uh, cooperate uh, some aids to the museum. I mean, packing materials, uh, et cetera, et cetera, because uh, we have received a number of proposals and uh, we are very grateful for it, uh, for them. And uh, uh, now just have some bureaucracy moments to, to manage it because uh, of uh, nuances in legacy and relocated uh, governmental institutions and reload of financial and other systems in Ukraine. 
so I, I would like to, to thank you very, very much for all this support from ICOM community, Blue Shield community, ICOMS community, because um, and we dream, we dream to see uh, to see you uh, in Prague in. Uh, Merci, uh, uh, yeah, I hope, I hope <laughs> it will be possible. Maybe for, for some some of us, maybe <laughs> I hope. Thank you, thank you so much. Uh, I would like I, I can leave in chat my email, uh, and um, of course you have. Uh, it, it is also possible to contact via uh, Icom Ukraine uh, Facebook page and other contacts. We are in contact. Uh, a, a number of our colleagues are now in army. I mean, museum workers, scientists, etc., and, and and other colleagues, and uh, they do not have possibility to answer fast, for example. But uh, a number of us uh, are still in uh, more or less safe territories and safe uh, places. Uh, so we are now have uh, a team of colleagues in Lviv, in the western part of Ukraine, uh, and they will uh, help us to coordinate all the processes. And I will inform you about uh, these people and the contacts uh, and all the details. Thank you one more time. Thank you so much. And I hope we will we will do it together because it's, it's important. And uh, I think we will uh, face with a new Ukraine after all this situation. Thank you. Merci, uh, Katarina, de votre... Thank you very much, Katarina, for your message. You can really count on us to relay all of the requests that you will make. This is the spirit of this evening. And of course, I also hope that we will see you and others in Prague. You are all warmly invited. Please do put your email address in the chat you know that ICOM France will be passing on all of your requests. You will see that the community has strongly mobilized with museums and institutions, scientists and training institutions, our public institutions are all here. So as I said earlier, I'm going to hand over to Eric de Chassé, who is director um, of INP, the National Heritage Institute in France. I know that he has, um, sorry, INHA. I know that he has a lot today. Thank you very much. I'm going to be very brief. INHA has reacted very quickly and somewhat disorganized way. And I thank Angelina Zabitivska for what she said and we all need to be better coordinated. Firstly, we need to relay possibility for support with art history researchers, for instance, and museum curators, but also those working in universities or elsewhere. We need to look at the possibilities for those requiring exile. And we would like to find places where people can continue to work. This is true across all research, art history institutions. In Rio, for instance, that has made a specific email address for any requests for exile. There's possibilities in Rome. The higher education and research pools has offered specific support for Ukrainian researchers. There is a long process, unfortunately to have a guest researchers at INHA. But on our homepage of our website, there is an address given to request help or guidance. This could also be valid for Ukrainian researchers who need to understand the best options for them in this situation. 
And I'm sure that I think the second action is very clear in the world of culture. There is a suspension of cooperation with all institutions financed by the Russian state or private institutions that are explicitly linked to Putin. I'm saying this because we're talking a lot about the Ukraine, but there's a question for individual researchers in Russia who are opposed to the Russian invasion. And these researchers are also encountering problems. So we are willing to welcome individuals who find themselves in that situation. My colleagues will be talking more about the initiatives. I will be handing over to Sylvain to talk about that. There are going to be weekly conferences on the situation in Ukraine in Paris about Ukrainian culture and heritage. We will be inviting all French-speaking museums. The first conference is going to be managed by someone at the Louvre Museum about the Christian art in Kiev. And there are other proposals not quite finalized about the Ukrainian role in some of the collections in France. Any suggestions are very welcome. So if you go to the INHA homepage, you will be able to find this information. 2022 Art History Festival is going to have four roundtable sessions dedicated to Ukrainian art at the 4th of December at Fontainebleau in Paris. We have a very small contribution, but we are seeking to present Ukrainian art and history whenever we can. Not all of you will know about this initiative. American colleagues from the University of Stanford have established a consortium called Tusho, Saving Ukrainian Cultural Heritage Online. And the aim is to archive all available data online about Ukrainian heritage and art history. So firstly, websites in Ukraine in order to archive them and protect them in case they are destroyed by Russian cyber attacks. This also concerns anything that can be linked to collections. The link has just been shown in the chat. Things are happening. This is my very general presentation. I wish you a great meeting and discussion about Ukraine. We had a meeting recently with around 220 people who were very affected by this message of solidarity and the support that we would like to give to our Ukrainian colleagues and the entire Ukrainian population in your resistance. Thank you. Thank you very much, Eric de Chassé, for the very concrete your conclusion of our admiration in the face of Ukrainian resistance is something we all support. 
I would now like to hand over to Charles Personnaz if you would like to talk about your action as director of the French Heritage Institute, INP. I know that you're going to talk about Alif, but there is somebody from Alif represented in the room, so perhaps you can share what you're going to say. I would like to say to everybody, and particularly our Ukrainian colleagues, that you can ask any questions you like in the chat or speak in response to anything that is said throughout the discussion. We have somebody speaking. I am now going to hand over Please do turn off your microphone. Thank you. So Charles Personnaz, over to you. Thank you very much, Juliette. Firstly, thank you for this opportunity to show our Ukrainian friends our friendship and solidarity. As Eric de Chasse was saying, our admiration for your resistance as well of the Ukrainian people to this unexplainable aggression. We are committed to stand alongside you. Unfortunately, in recent months, INP has become aware of very disturbing events in the Caucasus and in the Middle East, in Armenia uh, particularly, we have always reacted the same by thinking that it is essential to make known the heritage of the concerned regions, in this case Ukraine, as much as possible. Perhaps it is not well known in France or in Europe, and it is key to show it what is shown is harder to damage in the context of shared information. The damage caused to heritage needs to be as damaging in terms of information as possible for the person causing that damage. As Eric de Chasse said, we need to show Ukrainian monuments and museums beyond the circuses and that are well known in the history of art. And if the INP can contribute to that, we will by taking part in conferences that have been mentioned and also in events. We are available for our Ukrainian colleagues so that they can speak outside of the borders of Ukraine to all Europeans, especially in France for our institution. In terms of concrete action and aid to protect collections, we, in times of crisis and war recently, we have drawn on Alif, and I'm glad that there is a representative of Alif here. The roadmap for Ukraine has now been clarified and explained. This funding can allow us to act according to the needs expressed by our Ukrainian colleagues. Finally, I would like to add that INP trains curators with a large network of former students, of restorers and curators in the crises in the Middle East and Caucasus through financing, through Alif and other financing, we have been able to support the colleagues affected. We are also available to work with you to list needs and coordinate aid alongside European and French institutions who are determined to save Ukrainian heritage 
which is the real identity of this nation for whom we have such admiration. Thank you very much, Charles Personnaz. Uh, we know your true commitment to colleagues in Ukraine. Please do make this declaration as we have heard please do ask any questions or get involved throughout this session i would now like to hand over to ecomos france eric palo the president of ecomos france congratulations on being elected president eric palo i think you have some timing issues so let's hear from you now Good evening, everybody. Thank you very much for organizing this meeting. I would like to say that at our General Assembly this afternoon, ECOMOS France expresses compassion and admiration for the entire Ukrainian people. I would like to say that on behalf of the board. I'm going to be very brief and just say that we are available to help Ukrainians with heritage and monuments. I would like to come alongside Charles Personnaz, and I agree that we need to know more about monuments and other heritage in Ukraine to support you as much as possible. I would like to end by saying that the members of ICOMOS France have know-how and competence in architecture, urban planning, and they are on hand when needed to support the entire Ukrainian people. And I would like to welcome and also give a big shout out to our colleagues from ICOMOS Ukraine. Thank you very much, Eric. It is very important. The research institutes and museums should be working together to coordinate their actions. And I think that the message that you have given to the Ukrainians is that we need to listen. We are here to listen to you during our session today. We are lucky to have the interpreters. So I'm going to hand over to Rip Ripson now, who is president of ICOM Poland. As I said earlier, I Poland has already welcomed 1 million Ukrainian refugees and we are going to be hearing from Poland now. So Piot, I'm going to hand over to the representative of the Ministry of Culture after that. So Piot, I'd like to hear from you. Thank you. Thank you very much, Juliette, and thank you for- Thank you very much. Morning, uh, to take the, the, the floor here. Um, I want to very briefly sum up what we are uh, involved with, being the closest neighbor with the longest border with uh, with uh, with the Ukraine, and that is why um, we have uh, that many uh, refugees coming over. And uh, of course, we are in contact on many many levels with our Ukrainian colleagues. So the assistance that is being mounted now is happening on four different levels. One level is a very intense, sometimes chaotic, uh, popular movement of the population, which is uh, assisting the refugees in many, many ways. And uh, uh, the, and, it, and and this is a, a kind of a direct, immediate help to especially women and children who are coming over with very little positions and very often no place to stay. Second, uh, more professional level of help is um, being amounted by two different platforms in the museum sector, I would say. One is us, ICOM Poland, and we want to focus on, 
on, on, on, on two, uh, two areas. One area is um, quick grants and stipends to uh, those professionals uh, from the museum and art history uh, milieu in the Ukraine who would wish to spend time in, in, in different cultural institutions in Poland. Second is uh, an immediate need of uh, creating uh, education space for tens, if not hundreds of thousands of children who are in Poland now uh, from the Ukraine and will be in demand of schooling and museums can offer, museums throughout the country can offer both um, their education facilities and space which they have to conduct lessons and also to provide entertainment. Those kids are traumatized and they need, uh, they need, um, they need also play, a place to, to have fun and to, to play. What we will try to do in the uh, upcoming uh, days and weeks, and hopefully not months, but I'm afraid we have to prepare for a longer journey, is uh, to finance educators who are uh, speaking Ukrainian and usually are Ukrainian, which will both provide uh, paid jobs and will provide assistance uh, to um, the children in need. Third thing is being organized by a coalition of Polish museums, which uh, have organized themselves uh, mainly through the a growing group of directors of those museums. And they are co collaborating with the Ministry of Culture and with their, especially with their colleagues in the Ukraine to try to help in the more heavy manners, matters, which is, you know, crates, packing materials, all those things that, uh, that need, uh, well, something more than Icon Poland can provide, which means transport and, 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 and some funding and so forth. And fourth uh, level is happening, uh, as I'm informed by the Ministry of Culture, on the ministerial level, which is, uh, which I cannot verify, but I think it is in contact with um, the Ukrainian counterparts. And here the discussion uh, is about safe havens and uh, providing uh, more serious uh, hiding places and secure places for um, end endangered, endangered uh, cultural heritage. So these are the four areas in which we are organizing ourselves to help our, our neighbors who are very, very close to us. And we are quite knowledgeable both about the cultural heritage in, in the Ukraine and uh, about uh, what is happening in different cities of the Ukraine. And lastly, I would like to say that together with some of our um, friends from the national committees in the region, especially the Czech, uh, ICOM Czechia and uh, ICOM Lithuania and, um, I, I, and uh, ICOM Estonia, I can't list them all, we have issued an appeal to exclude ICOM Russia from being a part of the ICOM community for the time of the, um, of the war Russia is waging upon the Ukraine, which does not, of course, exclude the individual members, but is refraining ICOM Russia as an organization to have a vote and to have a voice in the international community. Thank you. Thank you very much for your extremely concrete message. Thank you for everything that you are doing to welcome your professional colleagues who are entering your country. You were talking about our museum professional friends Russia is at war. We are not at war with the Russian people. I think it is important that we say that there are museum professionals in Russia who will need to be helped as well, I believe. I would now like to hand over to other colleagues 
from Poland or, or Ukraine. I would now like to hand over to Estelle Guy Debut, who is member of the ICOM France board, with whom we work regularly and is representing Imed France this evening. Thank you very much for accepting to come this evening to represent the Museums of France. Thank you very much, Juliette. I wanted to remind everyone that the ministry is supporting Ukraine and our Ukrainian colleagues. I am speaking this evening on behalf of the Musée de France, France Museums Network president who has been very busy since the start of the conflict. She wanted to say a number of things on behalf of the French ministry this evening. Firstly, we would like to speak on behalf of the French museum professionals to express our solidarity with the Ukrainian people and our commitment to defend and protect heritage that is currently threatened. Let us also not forget that there are a number of Russian members who are against this war but cannot get involved in this discussion. As our first speaker, Sophie Delapierre, reminded us that the Ministry of Culture in France believes that this is a long haul issue. So we are responding in the heat of the moment here, but we need a long term response. There's a need for a legitimate need for organization and we are going to find the right way together. Let me also remind you that the topic has been shared by European cultural ministries. There was an informal meeting in Angers in the north of France yesterday and today these discussions between ministers are going to lead to decisions being taken that will be communicated shortly. In France, the Ministry of Culture has issued support with 1 million euros to support French cultural institutions that are allowing cultural professionals in Ukraine to continue working. I would also like to say that we can mobilize support through Aurélie de la Chimie. And I will leave you that contact information in the chat later. A number of my colleagues at the ministry are adjusting their programs. Bruno Favel, for instance, is preparing a conference on heritage and risk that we are facing. Bruno and the speakers will be looking at Ukraine at that moment. I would like to thank people for the professional welcoming schemes, the, the guest researcher schemes that are being implemented. This allows people to continue working. I would also like to underline the mobilization across France, all levers our important. Sylvia will be speaking later by Drac Normandy, the Louvre, the Pompidou Center, the Musée d'Orsay, the French National Library, the Musem, the Louvre School and professional 
associations that have mobilized across France. And this is a way of resisting and the ministry is very attentive to these actions. I would not like to forget our colleagues from artistic creation, FRACs and art centers have responded by supporting Ukrainian artists with website home pages that send a number of offers of help. To finish, I would like to remind you that very concretely, this may be symbolic, but I think that this has importance during a time of war. The MNRC, for instance, is, is proposing in Paris to have the Ukrainian flag displayed at night, lit up against the walls. So this is all going to be a source of inspiration across this territory and many others. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Estella. Your information was very precise and it shows the strength of France's commitments at the highest level. Let us now enter into a phase of debate. There are a number of directors of large museums that will be sharing precise stories about what they are implementing to support their colleagues. I would like to say something just before handing over to these colleagues. We've had two museum professionals We've had a meeting between different museum professionals. We have heard the distress and I can see the messages in the chat. We are addressing all museum professionals across the world, provided that they are working with us in solidarity. Merci, Juliette, et, uh, bonsoir. Thank you, Juliette, and good evening to all our colleagues and particular thoughts to our friends in Ukraine. Like all museum professionals, we've been really gripped by what's happening. And I think like all museum leaders, we've looked in our collections at what could reference Ukraine. And we find some works of art and, and uh, metal works that will be exhibited from Wednesday in our collections in a permanent way with a text inviting uh, people to support Ukraine. But our action has been different from what has been expressed by a number of different people, is that we do not know the art and the heritage of Ukraine very well, firstly. And then we also need to get involved in a long-term way so our proposal is to support a number of different institutions. We have a number of institutions that have received support from a number of different institutions and associations, and also from the Friends of Museums. So we have a very simple proposal. Every Wednesday, we want to have a conference which will talk about an aspect of culture, of art of heritage of Ukraine and to continue this conference session until the end of hostilities. That is the commitment that we are making. Each conference session will be led by a professional with a qualified academic, academic background. This is supposed to be a high level, high quality uh, event. It will be held physically uh, in Paris at the National Art History Institute and all all the conference sessions would also be filmed and put online so the idea is to create a kind of library which is accessible to all French speaking people which gives um, a visibility to the culture and heritage of Ukraine. So we invite all disciplines and all sectors to be involved. We're going to start on the first Christian edifices of Kiev, which are of course being threatened by bombing at the moment. 
and uh, there's also photographs of uh, Ukrainian works of literature and also UNESCO World Heritage sites, or, sorry, not necessarily UNESCO, but World Heritage sites in Ukraine. We are wanting to help people to understand and see alongside the this focus on the the fighting and the humanitarian aid that we can provide but also at the same time help people to see that cultural goods cultural assets and heritage is is there in front of people's eyes we want to work with our partners to access a network of knowledge which would draw in scientists who have worked on these areas of Ukrainian art and heritage and can talk about that. So if you want to contribute to this program um, by telling us about resources that uh, could be useful, please do get in touch with us. I will put the contact information in the chat. We recognize that there is a real difficulty in identifying uh, competent people, art historians that know these subjects well. So please do help us to, to map and to list these people. And thank you to any museums and associations that have, uh, that, that, that mandate colleagues in their, in, uh, among their members to come and do conference sessions with us. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Sylvain. You are among the first to have, have been mobilized to promote Ukrainian heritage and culture. I think we'll have a debate a bit later on, but I'm going to pass over to the Pompidou Center now. I was supposed to pass over to you between before 6.30 p.m. Paris time, but I'm afraid uh, time has moved on. I don't know if you're still there. Perhaps we could hear from you now. Good evening, and um, my particular thoughts to the people of Ukraine and those who are with us online right now. The Pompidou Center has made a significant uh, donation, or received a significant donation with, with regard to Ukrainian um culture and heritage and we would like to be able to keep some of these works we are in connection with a number of different people of course i'm uh, celebrate the work of the ministry of culture and I, we would, would like to send them the works that we currently have also in in line with what eric de chasse has said we have also developed a research program uh, fund we have uh, which was uh, funded received russian funding we have we have interrupted and stopped suspended that program for the time being because it was not appropriate and we have also started a number of uh, events and we are wanting to hear from a number of artists, particularly people that are currently in Kiev, so that they could speak on our forums. And I think it's this is going to be something very important. We've already started uh, talking about this do Ukrainian donation that we've received. We have opened up a, a, a room dedicated to the School of Kharkiv, and we hope from June to start uh, going further in order to express our solidarity with the people of Ukraine. Of course, we are ready to collaborate with Sylvain and with others for anything linked to this uh, program for um, contemporary and modern art in Ukraine. I would like to say again that we're thinking of all our colleagues who are in Ukraine and 
hold on everybody. Sorry, I had to uh, have my microphone off. Thank you, Nicola, for what you've shared and also for helping us to understand how much the Pompidou Centre is responding and ready to get engaged. Thank you for your involvement. I'm going to pass over to Jean-Francois now who is the president of MUSEM in Marseille. Good evening, Jean-Francois. You are one of the museums and museum directors that really got going very quickly in terms of supporting Ukraine, so it would be good to hear from you. So we have we had five hours for Ukraine last Sunday at the museum. We'll do that again, of course. We'll take part with Sylvain in what's going on on Wednesdays. There has been the Wednesday conference sessions. What we ha had a lot of people came over these five hours on Sunday, and I think that our audiences want to us to explain to them more about uh, the Russian propaganda with regard to cultural and linguistic identity. And I think a number of initiatives will be taken. And we've worked on this with an excellent university, Ex Marseille University, which just re explained in 20 minutes. Uh, the kind of a his, this historical revisionism uh, that is in being engaged in, and we have to continually put in place comparisons because this we're not we don't know uh, the history of this area very well, and it needs to be explained in a expert and skillful way. We gave room to contemporary Ukrainian cinema uh, with a, an excellent documentary, which I recommend. And then there was text from Henri Karkov, who we've invited to come to the Museum at the end of May, and I hope that he'll be able to be with us. He's also been invited by the College of Translators of Arles. On another note, I'd like to talk about the potential hosting of professionals. We haven't yet talked about legal issues. I've been looking into this and calling people around this question. Unlike what we perhaps uh, thought would happen last week was that the 27 European Union member states have voted to consider Ukrainian refugees as atypical in a legal sense. That means they don't go through the heavy uh, system that have we've had to use, for example, for Afghan refugees for the last crisis or uh, Burmese um, refugees. So there, there is a Ukrainian uh, citizens can come uh, and declare their presence. So each prefecture in France is uh, handles this, and they haven't yet published their guidelines. But it's it's the prefectures in France that will be responsible for for handling uh, migration. But there's immigration around this area, but there's a number of things that are not yet very clear, but a coordinating prefect will be appointed, which may well be Joseph Siemens, who was going to coordinate 
the 100 year anniversary of, of 1918. So this is a historian and it's likely to be him that leads this uh, process. So it would be interesting and very useful for there to be contacts or, or between NGOs and associations with this coordinating prefect, because I think there will be museum professionals who will be able to engage with the classical process uh, and in, engage in and host perhaps contemporary artists who we, we might be able to identify spontaneously. So I think there needs to be coordination between us, among us, but also coordination once the texts have been, the legal texts have been published uh, with the coordinating prefect for Ukrainian immigrants. That's just what I wanted to contribute at this point. Thank you very much, Jean-Francois. Yes, I think it's very important to have heard about what you're doing at MUSEM and uh, your right to underline the reality of the situation. And we're seeing how associations of museums, NGOs focused on heritage are coordinating between them. But if we want to actually be able to succeed in hosting and welcoming people, we need to connect in with the ministry. And I think that there is somebody in the chat putting information down from the Interior Ministry in France. Thank you, Judith Cagan, who's been putting that in the chat. So I think these are some really concrete things. And I hope that for our Ukrainian friends, uh, I hope it's very positive to hear this commitment and this very concrete commitment on the, on the part of our colleagues. Perhaps I could round off this third uh, round of looking at museum actions by hearing from uh, the representative from Univers Science. And then I'm going to ask uh, the representative of the Federation of French uh, Curators to speak uh, to us. And of course, you can always ask questions in the chat at any point. And uh, with the people from the History of Art Museum could also speak later. So Sophie, it's over to you first. Thank you, Juliette, and thank you for sharing all these initiatives, everybody. Yeah, we're wanting to support our Ukrainian colleagues that we heard this evening, and we really do admire them. Univers Science, my institution, has committed to support the Ukrainian population, and yesterday published the opportunity for visitors who want to make an additional donation of two euros when buying their ticket at our institution. And this donation will then be given to the French Red Cross for the Ukraine appeal. And then uh, Univers Science will give the equivalent of the 5,000 first uh, gifts to a program focused on hosting scientists. And this will support uh, scientists and artists in exile. And we put this uh, call for donations in place uh, yesterday. And we've worked to try and share initiatives as we see ICON France doing. We note that our Polish colleagues who are perhaps on the very front line of the solidarity response, they have welcomed a number of refugees, but they've also welcomed Ukrainians into their teams by employing them, men and women, in order to teach children and to give uh, communication and 
to, to children. A number of science centers have started to share these initiatives because as a lot of people have said, this could yet go on for some time, what we're experiencing now. So this short term and medium term support is something that we're also trying to move forward as Universions. Thank you, Sophie. We know that Universions is an important force and has really some effective um, response. I'd like to pass over to Françoise Collange from uh, Bouclier de France, French Shields, and then also from the representative of the Association of Curators. These are very important associations for protecting heritage. Could you tell us about the actions that you are implementing, implementing at the moment? Perhaps first of all, Françoise and then Eleonore. Yes, uh, good evening. So the Bouclier Bleu Association is part of the Blue Shield International um, Association and it's amazing to see how many people are engaging and the number of activities that have been talked about already in this meeting and and this is really remarkable um, first of all because information and communication about Ukrainian heritage is a is an important way of protecting it we our colleague who was there earlier and, and may still be here who is the blue shield representative in ukraine they're trying to put in place what's needed on the ground but the blue shield international organization is working with committees in order to contribute to these different actions. We are letting the international committee uh, lead us and take initiative. The conflict in Ukraine, like other conflicts as we've seen in Middle East and in Africa, is being uh, carried out by a signatory of the Hague Treaty and they need to uh, abide by what they've signed and we need to hope that the international pressure will contribute to limit damage and protect sites. Of course, we can't go beyond this international pressure, but I just want to remind you that in these conflict situations, which are really very complex, the situation is constantly changing. A number of speakers have said that we had to think long term about all this and also that the situation could continue to get more complex. For the moment, we are in a conflict that is a of conventional warfare where weapons are being used that are supposed to offer a minimum of protection to civilians and sites. We, but we can see there are a number of concerns already. There are already uh, proceedings being put before international courts with regard to the weapons that have been used. So the expertise of Blue Shields International on the area of conflict and heritage, which is impact, is something that needs to be um, involved. Depending on how things develop on the ground, the, the question is really about how armies are made aware of the issues involved around heritage. And it, it is that that will affect the support that we as professionals can offer. And it is with regard to this concrete help on the ground, we need to understand that, that this can all take a lot of time and that initiatives in terms of the 
future of Ukraine are really very important. It's really important to do digital inventories at this time and to export data to into to places outside of the country which will make it possible to carry out the legal proceedings necessary because we are to we'll be able to prove what has happened this is something that's very important as well my colleague mentioned an american institution that put in place a system of this kind other organizations have put in place documents and works of art systems at Blue Shield, Shield International, we have opened up communication lines on social media and Facebook in order to communicate about, communicate about these different initiatives. We do so that information circulates, but of course there is the corollary risk that we might identify places where this data is stored and we know that the digital war is a reality it's very important to understand where the data is stored but we also need to be aware of this digital war and we need to maintain the digital information so that we can have evidence later on so those are two things i thought were very important to to restate there is this issue of coordination we can see at an, a national level there are a lot of initiatives and it's important to structure these initiatives so that they focus perhaps on conserving digital data or sending equipment or and these are all important areas that need to be restated and this cooperation needs to be put in place as events unfold from from now but we also need to be able to evaluate the situation and understand what is going on because operations we will only be able to really act when we know what has truly been impacted so that's what i just wanted to talk about in terms of those essential points we remain on alert at least in terms of communication and we aim to communicate this information at a national level in order to encourage a clear political communication from the french government and i think that has that we have uh, that has been the, been marked there has been a uh, movement in this but we want our colleagues to be aware of these issues thank you Francoise it's really very important for Blue Shield to be here with us this evening I want to hand over to Eleonore who works at the Quai Branly Museum who is speaking this evening on behalf of the Federation of uh, curators uh, and then please tell us very concretely and specifically what you're doing thank you can you hear me yes so i am eleanor kissel i am uh, speak on behalf of the federation of curators and uh, conservers and restorers these are people who are of course well equipped in terms of their skills for documenting damage evaluating the situation as we've just heard from Francoise Collange um, implementing uh, safeguarding uh, processes that is part of what our, our job is and also what some of us have been trained to do we also want to contribute to the monitoring of the material uh, condition of collections and while also 
keeping an eye on the physical and mental health of teams, of course, because it's very difficult to intervene when there is an, an accident and when there is an armed conflict is even more than difficult. Uh, conservers, conservators and restorers are often responsible for uh, engaging at an at a material level and this is a very significant challenge whether it's a regional or national level when they're perhaps working on a fire for example or an accident we we can understand that actually techniques it's not just about techniques but we're in a situation where the people that we're working with are actually in shock and that's even more the case when it's not just an accident but uh, an armed conflict so we need to approach this with humility of course we will we will be involved in sending equipment information exchanging information or on-site visits but as we heard from madame zabitiska at the beginning we can only answer uh, requests from heritage professionals in ukraine we we in terms of our own initiative we won't be standing back we'll be very uh, very much wanting to hear uh, what we're being asked to do, but we can't intervene on our own initiative. So very specifically, our federation a few months ago put in place a list of professionals who are ready to engage in the event of a catastrophe um, to talk about what could happen in France and the, this sorry, this is a list of people who can be involved in situations in France or abroad and it's a list that our federation holds and so when the national international coordination is put in place this will be a resource for providing information and also a physical resource for helping professionals who said that they are available for missions. There are a number of professionals who said they're available for mission missions abroad. If you have any questions, please put, do put them in the chat and I could send the, the link to this list. Yes, I think you you are not supposed to be intrusive in your approach at the Federation and thank you very much. That's very much the approach we're wanting to have. We're wanting to hear what the needs are. Um, I'm, I've got a number of people who are asking to speak still, so perhaps we'd, we could hear from Capitaine de Guerre, who is responsible for heritage on behalf of the French army and please if there are other people who want to speak please do um, put a note in the chat and or raise a hand and I'd like to leave time for our French guests to be able to respond to everything they've heard this evening Captain Lebert over to you Thank you very much. Good evening. I am an official working with the delegation of the French army. There's a military cooperation that aims to work with around 10 specialized military units in for cultural heritage protection. There's American, British representatives that we work with, and we work with the cultural institution to identify the different destructions. And this is through geospatial information, satellite photographs of any potential sites. We 
compare this with open source data and military intelligence that gives us a surveillance and monitoring of different destruction. There are around 127,000 cultural sites reported and there have been around 200 cultural attacks so far. So there is military intelligence in this area in constant dialogue with international bodies, including UNESCO. Thank you very much. It was important for you to be able to share that. Uh, Libye, you are head of the Art History Institute and have been active in the chat. Would you like to speak? I'm going to hand over to Olivier Bonfi now. I would just like to thank everybody for this initiative and everybody who has spoken so far. The committee, the French Committee of Art History brings together cultural and heritage professionals. Unfortunately, we're not able to provide direct su support, but we have been relaying information. And I think we have a role in long-term awareness raising of the loss of heritage in Ukraine at the moment so that we can realize the importance of our shared history with, with Russia as well. I know that what uh, Jean-Francois Chenet said as well is that we need to explain this, like for Alsace and lots of re regions in Europe, there's a shared history, but this should not be at the expense of national history. So we are going to play the role of relaying information. If uh, you require money, we can pass that information on. And also we will be raising awareness to a larger audience. And I think that this is a way of ensuring that action for Ukraine remains in the long term. Thank you very much for sharing, Olivier. Many representative, and then I'm going to hand back over to our Ukrainian colleagues so that they can share what their takeaways are from this evening. I'm now going to hand over to the representative of Alif. Good evening. Thank you very much for giving me the floor just to complete. There have been direct funding actions for Ukrainian colleagues by Alif. We can see the applications have been managed very quickly. Funding has already been sent for requests made a few days ago. The main requests are going to be for protecting collections, so with storage and packaging material, for instance. These are concrete needs, and these are types of applications that can and are eligible for funding. There was a Polish representative earlier, and the Polish support has allowed us to obtain this kind of material and uh, they are then able to, to manage logistics and transport. So this is an example of what is happening on the ground at the moment and the responses that we are able to give. Thank you very much, uh, Louis Cascado. I, I, I want to leave our Ukrainian colleagues with the last say today. There are representatives of ICOM Europe, ICOP Austria, ICOM Spain, ICOM Tunisia, ICOM Belgium, a number of representatives with a number of ICOM presidents here today to stand alongside you. Louise, would you like to say something before you leave? You and I launched the first press release together Yes, this is Luis Raposo, just to congratulate ICOM France on this initiative at the European Agency of ICOM. 
we are available and mobilized to offer all possible support to our ICOM Ukraine colleagues. Katrin was in Kyoto, and uh, I, I, I say a warm hello, and, and we are here and uh, we are going to do whatever we possibly can. That is the state of mind. Our colleagues across Europe, if any of you would like to say anything, I know that some of you have written in the chat, you do not have to, but uh, I would just like to congratulate you for being on this call from start to finish. I can see that Maria Monge from Portugal is also writing. If any of you wish to speak, it's now. Or alternatively, I'm going to hand back over to our Ukrainian colleagues. It is 7 p.m., so I'm sure that many of you are now tired. So. Angelina and Katerina, you have spent the entire evening with us. You have heard all of these concrete actions being carried out in solidarity and in support. But as we said at the start, you are the ones that need to say what you need. Now you know what we are capable of offering. And there are so many other initiatives that we perhaps don't know as well. So Angelina, would you like to say something? Katerina, would you like to say something before we wrap up this evening? Uh, so I would like, dear colleagues, uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mrs. President. Uh, thank you, dear colleagues. Uh, I, I'm so emotion emotionally uh, fulfilled now, uh, and uh, I would like to, to thank you one more time for all your work and for all these initiatives. I, I have also saved the chat and all, all the contacts uh, and details of uh, of this evening uh, meeting, and uh, I would like just to, to tell that I dream uh, that one day Ukraine uh, will, uh, will be so strong, enough strong, to help other countries, uh, such as other countries now try to help Ukraine. So I, I'm thank you so much, and uh, I hope we will be stronger uh, together after all this, let's say, lesson for our history and for our culture. Thank you, thank you so much. Thank you, we will be in contact, thank you. And I also would like to say thank you to international community of museum specialists and first of all we are pleased that we are not alone we feel the support that is white that is sincere and we hope that we will win because we have such nice friends all over the world thank you very much Angelina, I think that you have spoken directly to our hearts. You have understood that we are alongside you in solidarity and there is real collaboration. We are here because we want to help you and because we trust you and we are admiring, we admire you for the strength that you have in this catastrophe. Our sole desire is to be able to see you again. Katerina was saying, I hope that we'll see you in Prague. For those of you who are not aware, Prague is the general conference of ICOM that will be held in August and many people will be there. And we would love to see you there. Please do, Take a look at the chat. There are people still sending information, colleagues who were not able to speak this evening, but who want to say everything that is still possible. We will be in contact, Angelina. We will all be in contact. We are going to listen to your requests and collect everything that we can in order to support you. If you like in a few days or weeks, we can redo a discussion like this. It, it was very spontaneous. 
it is the experience of the health crisis that has helped us to learn how to use these communication tools that we didn't have two years ago, and it can connect us very spontaneously and very easily. So do come back to us and tell us what you need. Once again, I'm speaking on behalf of my museum and ICOM colleagues from across the world. I'm sure that ICOM Spain and others, I've forgotten many, but we are in solidarity with you and standing alongside you. But Angelina, I think you have wrapped up this session Otherwise, I would like to thank the ICOM team, Anclodes, Maurice, and others who have been working the past two days in order to organize this session. We are going to try to host this um, on YouTube as soon as possible. There have been some technical issues, but hopefully that was unnoticed. Thank you very much to our interpreters who have accepted to stay a little bit later on and to all of the speakers this evening. And I say I will see you again very soon. Thank you very much. I wish you great courage in Ukraine. You can see the number of messages that you're still receiving in the chat. I'm just going to leave the, the chat in place so that people can send their messages of support to Ukraine. I can see that Katerina is still there. If you want to say anything, then feel free. I wish you all an excellent evening and lots of courage. We stand alongside you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Merci Thank beaucoup. You Merci. Much. Messages are continuing to appear in the chat. Thank you. Thank you very much.